everybody, it's Evangelist Emma Garcia again. I come today with a prayer for you and another sermon. I pray that you'll keep joy in your heart today and every day. God knows that your future is bright and I pray that you'll know it too. I say this because I know what I am planning for you, says the Lord. I have good plans for you, not plans to hurt you. I will give you hope and a good future, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. Our prospects are as bright as promises of God. Addison Judson. We all go through many battles in life, but God is such a good, good father that we can truly find rest in him. And he will oftentimes call us into a new place to live and rest in that place. But he also wants us to go into that new land to reach the lost souls to lead them away from worshiping false gods. Genesis 35, 1. God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there. Make an altar there to the God who appeared to you when you fled from Esau. By listening to God and going to Bethel, this is Jacob's way to honor God for being good to him and blessing Jacob as God has done. When God tells us to do something, he not only intends to bless us, but bless us beyond our wildest dreams. At times in our lives, we are to leave a situation, but not permanently, or other times fear takes hold and it takes a long road back around for us to face that fear. We are to fear nothing but God. Have you ever been through a lot and then been called out by God to minister to the people or perhaps something else? I can't imagine facing the very things that Jacob was running from in his past was in the slightest bit comfy. God is such a good God that he uses even our fears for our good. Jacob was set apart by God. It didn't matter how he got the blessing and God could have protected Jacob from his brother Esau, but God had a purpose and it was Joseph and he needed to run so he would meet Rachel and have Joseph. Jacob came from Isaac, and he came from the promise God gave to Abraham and Sarah. If things hadn't been stopped when Abraham lied, Sarah had listened to her husband and lied about who she was. It could have prevented Isaac and then Jacob. But why is Joseph so important and the location? Because he saves his people and the people of the land from famine. It might not make sense why God is calling you to a land, but it has a big purpose. It may not be visible in your lifetime, but in generations to come. And when God calls you out to a place, he will provide not only the means to do so, but also the protection and the blessing. Just because maybe, just because we may be called out doesn't mean we aren't used to the, used the whole time or the whole way. Jacob was called to build an altar, but that was only a portion to the big picture. Not all leadings are for the full picture. It typically could be something as direct as an altar, while God reveals the, te the rest on the way or behind the scenes and showing Jacob later when Joseph saved them. Jacob knew he still needed to be a good leader to his household, Genesis 35, 2. So Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, put away the foreign gods that are among you and purify yourselves and change your garments. When we turn from our sin and come to God and receive him as our Lord and Savior, we are a new creation. That's what it means to put on new garments. We are renewed in Christ Jesus. It's hard to die to self and do that, but God shows us mightily in our lives what it truly means to be a child of God. Genesis 35, 3. Then let us arise and go up to Bethel so that I may build an altar to God who answers me in the day of my distress and has been with me wherever I have gone. The same God was with Jacob as a child. The same, the same Jacob that was running from his brother 
to the same God who was there while Jacob was fighting for Rachel. Genesis 35, 4. So they gave to Jacob all the foreign gods that they had and the rings that were in their ears. Jacob hid them under the terebinth tree that was near Shechem. I believe that it is symbolic when we walk away from our sin to put away the idols and anything else that goes along with it. Plus, it doesn't show the enemies the direction that they took. I believe that verse and the one before about Jacob asking them to give all that up was all that up is important for all the standers and the intercessors to give them hope. But it also gives hope that God knows that it's important that our household goes with us because we want to see the people that we love saved by God. That is why Jesus died on the cross for us is to die for the ones he loves to sacrifice everything. When we are in the plan and will of God and obeying what he is asking of us, he also gives us protection from seen and unseen enemies. Genesis 35, 6, And Jacob came to Luz, that is Bethel, which is in the land of Canaan. And he and all the people who were with him, the people who were with Jacob, got to witness to the glory of God. Not just for what God's done for Jacob today, but also what God did for Jacob back then. When Satan reminds us of our past, it's meant to delay and break us, to kill, steal, and destroy us. But when God reminds us of the past, it's to remind us that he had our backs then, and he will do it again today. Genesis 35, 9 through 10, God appeared to Jacob again, and when he came from Paddan Aram and blessed him, and verse 10, and God said to him, your name is Jacob, no longer shall your name be called Jacob, but Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel. Name change is important, even more so than the garment change, because it signifies the transformation that God's done with Jacob. When God came for me years ago, he pulled me out of the pig pen of my life, and he answered my prayers and gave me a new last name. I'm not the same at all. And at one point, it scared me, but God showed me that he gave the name Emma. He gave me the name Emma, and he wanted me to keep it. My name means whole or universal, and my middle name is a free-hanging plant, and my last name means brave in battle. God showed me that in him I am whole, but also brave in battles that I have faced in my life. Jacob got his new name, and it means God contended, wrestles with God, triumphant with God. He didn't stop pressing in until God blessed him. The faith that it takes to wrestle with God is unmeasurable. Genesis 35, 11 through 12, and God said to him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply a nation, and company of nations shall come from you, and the king shall come from your own body, and the land that I gave to Abraham and Isaac, I give to you, and I will give the land to your offspring after you. At times in your life, we don't know what God's about to do. All we feel is the tug forward. Sometimes God withholds all the details from us until we reach the place because God doesn't want Satan to come in and kill still or destroy it. Perhaps you can't see the move of God today, but trust and believe he is with you no matter the situation, even if all it is is a piece of paper saying you own a house or one move of God because that's all it takes is one move of God and your whole life can change, just like Jacob being called to build an altar. Jacob obeyed and look what God did and said, Don't hate the small beginnings, for you shall surely see our God mighty. Don't fret, for today is the day God made. His mercies are new every day. Don't stop praying. Don't stop slaying. For you shall surely see the moves of God on your life. Praise him in all things. Evangelist Emma Garcia. I pray that you have a beautiful and blessed day. Amen.